morning. I welcome you on this glorious Palm Sunday. We have arrived at Holy Week. We begin uh, the final journey with our Lord to the upper room, the cross, and the empty tomb. I welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time, both here in the sanctuary and online. I thank Patrick Clerken, who is our tech person this morning. The altar flowers are given in loving memory of Bob Allen and Nicholas Ventulo, and by Joan Allen. Also, the cupola this week is lit in memory of Jessica Graham by Andy and Tracy Graham. I'm going to call upon our Minister of Discipleship, who has a number of announcements. Good morning. So I do have a number of announcements. So for one thing, we're bringing back our junior acolytes. This was a program we had before COVID. This is where our youngest children can bring a battery-operated light into the sanctuary with the acolytes. And then they bring it out to Sunday school so that the children still have the light of Christ with them in Sunday school. So if you have a child that would like to sign up for this, please let me know. There is also a link in the Hilltop News. We're also starting today junior prayer leaders. So after the children's message, we will have some of the children a little bit older who can read, lead us in prayer instead of Reverend Hughes and myself. So these are important jobs, they're part of our worship team, and we invite all of our children to participate. Um, following the service today, we have an event, which I'll get back to, and then we have another event. So we have the Easter egg hunt down at the Batchelder Field, and we invite you all to join us. If you are volunteering to help, please meet at the church at noon to help uh, transport eggs and other things down to the field. And then we will set up for the one o'clock Easter egg hunt. Um, also coming up on April 24th, we're going to do Holy Hilarity, which we've done in the past a few years ago. We invite you all to submit your favorite faith-based jokes and come in your craziest outfits pajamas, costumes, whatever you want to feel silly. We think Jesus would have had fun with this, and we hope you will too. There is a link to submit those um, jokes in the Hilltop News. Um, and then I'm going to invite my friend Winnie the Moo, I think is back there. So my cow friend Winnie the Moo is going to come on up. Come on, Winnie. So the past few weeks, we have put Winnie the Moo to work. We have asked Winnie the Moo to teach other animals. See, Winnie the Moo is so tired from working so hard. <laughs> so Winnie the Moo has worked really hard to help teach some animals how to make their animal noises, right? Yep. And the reason for that is because today is our heifer birthday bash. We've had 12 months worth of cupcakes baked by some wonderful bakers in the church. They are all waiting for us in Fellowship Hall. And so we hope that you will join us for some cupcakes for donation to Heifer International. Heifer International raises money to give livestock to families in need and trains them on how to take care of those animals to make a living for themselves and for their family. So because we have put Heifer to work, or put Winnie the Moo to work so much, we're not going to ask for any more help working today. Instead, it's time to party! So please join us at the bash following the service. Thank you. I'm also going to call on Brenda Sutherland, who has an announcement on behalf of the care ministry. Good morning, everybody. Um, on behalf of CARE and um, members of our congregation that can't get to church, uh, we bring out the CARE tree that is in um, the back of uh, the sanctuary here. Um, and with that, um, we have cards. Pick up the card. You've got a two, two assortment. Um, there's a name on the tree with the address attached to it. So you'll pick that up, pick up a card. But then instead of making something to put inside, I actually went to... Um, all of our favorite store, Brasanti in town, and she had these beautiful um, prayer cards 
So I picked up a bunch of those, and they all have a beautiful saying on them with a um, Bible verse on the back. So you can pick up one of those. They're all assorted. And just put that inside the card, sign, the, sign your name, and mail it off to one of our, um, our congregation members. And it just lets them know that we're not forgetting them at Easter or any time during the year. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Just as an FYI, the Holy Hilarity is a tradition in some Eastern Orthodox churches where people would gather on the Sunday after Easter and tell jokes as a way of celebrating the wonderful news that God, through the resurrection, had the final laugh on Satan. Also, just so that everybody is not surprised, when Gail invites or does the children's message, she's going to invite the children forward, and that will be the first time we've had them forward in quite some time. And my heart is singing because the upper parking lot is full. (laughs) And the sanctuary, all of you wonderful people are here. We're coming out of this pandemic, knock on wood, and we are still standing. We are coming into Holy Week. There are a number of special services as we journey with our Savior through the final days and hours of his life. On Thursday, there will be our Monday Thursday service here in the sanctuary at 7.30. We will celebrate the Last Supper, and then there will be a tenebrae service, a service of shadows as the story of the Passion is told, and candles are extinguished until the only light at the end of the service is the light from the Christ candle. It is a very moving service. I hope you will join us then on Good Friday, we will be having an intergenerational walk through Holy Week. That will be at 5 o'clock here. We'll be joined by our sisters and brothers from Aldersgate. And then at uh, 5.45, there will be a soup and a sandwich supper. We'll share some fellowship. If you could email us to let us know you'll be coming, that would be helpful. Not necessary, but it will help us make sure that we have enough food. The Easter Vigil then continues throughout Good Friday into Saturday into Easter morning. There are a couple of slots for prayer and meditation. That is up in the chapel, and the link is in the Hilltop News. On Easter morning, we will celebrate the resurrection with the return of the town-wide ecumenical sunrise service at 6 a.m. on the common, and then we will gather here in our sanctuary at 10 a.m., and then my final announcement is that this is last call for lobster bisque. This Friday will be the last opportunity for lobster bisque until Frosty's Fair. I love doing it, but when we get to Good Friday, I sort of feel like Martin Luther King. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. There is a sign-up sheet up in Fellowship Hall for those who would like to order some of the bisque. If there are no other announcements, then let us join in celebrating our Savior's triumphant entry into the Holy City. join me in the call to worship. We gather this day to wave palms of joy and branches of peace. Eager to see Jesus and anxious to receive his blessing. We gather this day to wave palms of joy and branches of peace. That we may find peace in the midst of hurry and worry. We gather this day to wave palms of joy 
and branches of prayer. Ready to walk with Jesus through the joyful tribulation and the hours of darkness. To the day of victory. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna. join me in the prayer of invocation. God of every joyful celebration, it is easy to get swept up in the excitement of this day. Like the people of Jerusalem who welcomed our Lord into the holy city, we are hungry for a hero. We're starving for something spectacular, and we long for a glimpse of greatness. Help us to find it in the Savior who showed us what true greatness really is when he humbly got down on his knees at the Last Supper and washed the feet of the disciples. Lord, as we sing and shout our hosannas, help us turn a deaf ear to the pipers of prestige and privilege and power that we may faithfully follow the one who came to us on a simple beast of burden. This we ask as we say together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Be seated. Hosanna, an ancient Aramaic word that means save us now. That is what we celebrate this day, 
our Lord, our Savior, who came to rescue us from all that leads us away from God and the life that is truly abundant. So let us come now to God's altar as we give thanks with our tithes and our offerings.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of all our joyful hosannas, like the people of Jerusalem, we come this day to celebrate the coming of our Lord. We do so not only with our shouts of acclamation, but also with this offering that we lay now upon your altar. This we pray as disciples of the one who came to be with us, that we may one day be with you. Amen. I would like to invite the children to come on up and join me. It's been over two years since I was able to say that, so it's very exciting. Excited to see you all together up here. So first I have some pictures that I want you to look at with me. And I wonder if you can help me figure out what all these people have in common. So this is King Felipe and Queen Letizia from Spain. So take a look at them. What do they look like? What are they wearing? Okay, let's look at the next picture. These are a homecoming king and queen. Sometimes high schools and colleges, they have sometimes a football game, sometimes a big dance in the fall, and they choose some of the students to be king and queen. Does anybody know that guy? That's King Friday. He looked a little different when I was your age. He's a little more puppet-like and a little less cartoony, but that's King Friday, right? And this is not an actual king, but he is in a parade. He's the king of the parade. So what do all of these people have in common? What do you think? Oh. Are they all wearing white? I think they all have, oh, this and that picture, they're all wearing white. But what about all four pictures? What do they have in common? They're all royals. I like that you said royals. I was going for kings, but you included the women. I love it. All right. I'm going to come down and sit with you guys so I can be a little closer to you. I'm so excited you're up here. All right. So they're all royals, right? Or kings, right? And what are they all wearing? What did you notice they were all wearing? What did you notice? Fancy jewels. Fancy jewels. Crowns, fancy outfits, they all look very fancy, right? And so kings and queens, they're usually the king and queen of something, right? They have a kingdom, right? So let's see, King Friday is the king of the neighborhood of make-believe. And the homecoming king and queen are the king and queen of homecoming. The guy in the parade was the king of the parade. And then that other king and queen, Felipe and Letizia, are the king and queen of country, Spain, right? They all have a kingdom. Do we have a king? What do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you think we have a king, and a thumbs down if you think, no, we don't have a king. Did you know Jesus is a king? And he has a kingdom. Sometimes we call it a kingdom, because kin means family. His kingdom or kingdom is the kingdom of God. So he's our king. So do we have a king? We do. We have a king. But sometimes people don't understand that he's the king, or they don't realize that he is. And even in Bible times, sometimes people didn't quite understand. Because Jesus didn't wear the same things that they expected a king to wear, right? He didn't wear all the jewels and crowns and fancy outfits. He didn't always do the things that they expected a king to do or wanted a king to do. So he's a little bit different, right? So they weren't always sure if he was really a king. And in today's story, he actually comes to Jerusalem, and there's a parade for him, but it didn't look like that last picture we saw. 
looked a little different. He didn't come on a parade float or in a fancy car. He came on a donkey. Or sometimes they say a colt, so it could have been a horse, depends. But we usually think of it as being a donkey. Is that as fancy as a fancy car or a parade float? No. But do you think that people were excited that the king was coming? They were. They were so excited they started shouting things. What did they shout? I have some helpers. What did they shout? Hosanna. Hosanna. Peace in heaven. Hosanna, peace in heaven. Hosanna. Blessed. Glory in the highest. They shout all kinds of things. And so are we excited about Jesus too? Yes. So when the people were shouting though, some of the people who weren't quite sure told Jesus to make the people be quiet. Do you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, if you know, even if they're quiet, the stones will cry out. Do rocks cry? No. Do rocks yell? No. no. I think what Jesus meant was that even if those people don't say he's the king, there will be other people that say he's the king because he really is the king. And so the people were really excited. They shouted all those things, and they waved palm leaves, palm branches. And you're going to get real palm branches in Sunday school. But we're also going to use some of these to have a little parade on our way out to Sunday school. And in Sunday school, you'll get a stone to remind yourself that Jesus is the king, and it's okay to say Jesus is the king. It's good to say he's the king and share his love with others. So when we go out to Sunday school, hold on one second, okay? When we go out to Sunday school today, Caroline is going to carry the candle, which is the light of Christ. It's not really Jesus, but it's a symbol of Jesus, and we're going to have a parade and yell Hosanna. We don't get to yell very much in church, but I'm giving you permission today to yell only about how excited we are about Jesus. Can we practice real quickly on the count of three? We're going to yell Hosanna. Ready? One, two, three. Hosanna! So we're going to pray, and then we're going to leave for Sunday school, and I hope I'm not the only one yelling Hosanna. I hope you are all as excited as I am. Deal? All right. So I'm going to invite Bridget up. She is our junior prayer leader, and she is going to lead us in a prayer. Dear God, thank you for your work in our lives. Even when it shows up in unexpected ways, help us to always praise your holy name. We are grateful for your love, and we thank you for giving us Jesus, the King of Kings. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. So I'm going to invite you each to take a leaf, and we'll get the candle, and we'll have a parade. Ready? All right, ready? All right, let's go. Hosanna! 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 Hosanna!
Please be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Good people, let us enter into this time of silence that we might be one with our God. My sisters and brothers, are there prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day? Because of a. I, I don't know, it's a family in Middleton. They haven't said. Okay, and, and the name again is? I think it's Salvaggio. Salvaggio. So we pray for the Salvaggio family. Two of the members are in the hospital, and we ask that God be with them. Lord, in your goodness. I lift up in prayer Alice Long. She had surgery this past week to relieve some pressure on her brain. I'm happy to say that the surgery was successful. She is going to be moved to a rehab either today or tomorrow. We ask that God be with both Alice and her husband, Joe. Lord, in your goodness. We continue to pray for Sharon McGilvery, who is at Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital, receiving another round of chemotherapy. We ask that God's spirit of grace be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. Happy to share with you that the stem transplant, that stem cell transplant that Billy Hayes, Sandy's son, received in Florida, has been going well, and these signs are encouraging. We pray that it will continue to progress in that manner. Lord, in your goodness, we lift up in prayer uh, Kristen Pemberton, and she is recovering from surgery. She is awaiting some further test results. We pray that it will be positive news for her and her family, and that God's grace will be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. We also continue to lift up the Ukrainian people as they struggle with the terrible evil that is being inflicted upon them. We pray that the end to that war will come soon. Lord, in your goodness. Let us pray. God of heaven and God of earth, this is the day that you have made and we have come to rejoice and be glad in it. For truly the news isn't just good, it is wonderful. Once again, our savior comes to us, humbled and riding on a beast of burden. It fills our hearts with joy but also with sadness knowing that what lies before us and before him is so scary, full of pain and suffering. And yet Jesus said that he willingly laid down his life for his friends. And for that, we give you thanks. As we continue through this holy week, may the mystery of that love that came to dwell among us full of grace and your truth become deepened in our hearts that we may truly appreciate what happened on that cross far away. Be with us as we journey with him to the upper room and the cross and then beyond that 
to the glory of the empty tomb. The tomb that was empty but will be full of joy and peace and hope and love for us. Help us, Lord, to embody those blessings, the blessings of Emmanuel, that we might follow him, not just with our hosannas, but our deeds of loving kindness. Help us, Lord, to be a community of faith that brings that good news, that wonderful news, into our communities and beyond, so that even if it's just a little, we shed some of the darkness that is out there in the world. Holy One, you have heard our prayers, both those that we have spoken and those that are stirring in our hearts. And for that, we give you thanks. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. this time, I would like to invite Lauren McMullen to come forward and share the reading this morning from Luke's Gospel. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke's Gospel, the 19th chapter, beginning with the 29th verse. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, Already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, Rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Here ends the reading of God's word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, and always our Redeemer. Amen. It's called going viral. That's when you post a picture or a video online, and people like it so much that they share it with their friends, who share it with their friends, who share it with their friends. Before you know it, lots of people are talking about the picture or the video, and you're semi-famous. That happened to Elise Mikowski, who is with us this morning. Some of you may recognize her name. She grew up here in North Reading, and she attended Sunday school here at Union Congregational Church. In fact, I checked the records. 
She was confirmed right here in this sanctuary on May 31st, 2009. Some of you may also remember seeing a picture of Elise and her fiancé, Josh, in the Hilltop News a month or so ago. In fact, I'm going to ask them to stand up for just a second. They're getting married in August of next year. Congratulations. <laughs> and mom is up here from Virginia shopping for wedding dresses. You bought a wedding dress yesterday. Congratulations. Well, some time ago, Elise shared the news of her engagement with the students in her class. I think you've been dating for about eight years, was it? So they knew that it had been eight years that they were dating. And their reaction to the news was priceless, as you can see in this video. Elise posted that video to TikTok, and it went viral. Over 20 million people around the world <laughs> have watched that video. And 4.3 million people have given the video a big red heart, which I'm guessing is what you do on TikTok to let people know that you like the video. Because of that overwhelming response, last Monday, Elise was on the Kelly Clarkson show. <laughs> now, I have to confess that until last Monday, I'd never heard of Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Do you know who she is? I now know that she was the first person to win the American Idol competition, and she has her own daytime television show. Well, Elise couldn't believe it when I told her in an email that I'd never heard of Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> so I sent her another email and said, you have to remember that I'm a little older than you. And I grew up with singers like Billy Joel and Elton John and John, and John Denver. <laughs> then she really made my day when she emailed me back and said, who's John Denver? <laughs> <laughs> Going viral. That's essentially what happened when Jesus rode into the Holy City triumphantly on Palm Sunday. They didn't have TikTok back then, of course. But word quickly spread throughout the city that the Messiah had finally arrived. So people filled the streets to celebrate and welcome the one who was coming to them in the name of the Lord. As he rode into the city on the back of that donkey. Some people took their cloaks and they threw it on the ground in front of him. And although Luke doesn't mention it in his gospel, we know that other people waved palms and others filled the air with shouts of Hosanna. Yes, there was a lot of excitement that day. People, everyone was happy except for the Pharisees, which really doesn't come as a big surprise. After all, we know that the Pharisees didn't like Jesus. They didn't like his teachings. They didn't like the way he spent time with tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners. And they definitely didn't like the fact that he was telling all the people that the Pharisees were a bunch of hypocrites. So in the midst of that joyful jubilation, a few grumpy 
Pharisees went to Jesus and said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. In other words, Jesus, tell them to shut up. Instead of doing that, though, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, if these disciples were silent, the very stones would cry out. So Jesus didn't silence his disciples. He didn't do that because they were doing exactly what he wanted them to do. In fact, they were doing exactly what most people do when they find themselves on the receiving end of some good news. When you receive good news, you don't keep it to yourself. You share it with others. For example, when a child is born, you share the good news by taking a helium balloon that says it's a boy or it's a girl on it, and you tie it around your mailbox. When your son or daughter graduates from college, you share the good news with people by throwing a party and inviting your friends and family to come celebrate with you. When you get engaged these days, you share the good news with people by posting it on your Facebook page, or you might even upload a video to TikTok. When the news is good, you don't keep it to yourself, you share it with others. And that's especially true when it comes uh, to the Jesus who rode into the holy city on the back of that donkey. After all, Jesus is the ultimate good news. In our statement of faith, it says that in Jesus, there is forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in his kingdom, which has no end. That is the ultimate good news. And it needs to be shared because you and I both know that there are people out there who are searching and struggling. And who knows, there might be a few people like that sitting in these pews right now. Regardless of whether they're out there or they're in here, there are people who feel the same way that Lucy felt in an old Charlie Brown cartoon. In this particular cartoon, Lucy and Linus are standing at the bottom of this big hill. As they're standing there, Lucy turns to the hill and says, someday I'm going over that hill to find the answer to my dreams. Someday I'm going over that hill to find hope and fulfillment. I think for me, all of the answers to my questions in life are lying beyond these clouds over the grassy slopes of that hill. At that point, Linus takes his thumb out of his mouth. And he says, perhaps there's another little kid on the other side of that hill looking this way and thinking that the answers to all of life's questions are lying on this side of the hill. When Lucy hears that, she turns to the hill and hollers, forget it, kid. <laughs> like, like Lucy, there are people who are searching for a better life. And that better life can be found in the Jesus who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. That is the ultimate good news. Jesus uh, said, because I live, you will live also. That's the good news that needs to be shared with the elderly woman who just lost her husband. Jesus uh, said, Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the good news that needs to be shared with the guy who's working 70 hours a week and still feels like something's missing in his life. Jesus said, lo, I am with you always. That's the good news that needs to be shared with the teenager who 
feels like he or she is all alone in the world and is wondering if anyone really cares. Yes, Jesus is the ultimate good news that needs to be shared. And guess what? That's exactly what we're going to be doing in a couple of hours when we gather at the Batchelder School for that Easter hunt, egg hunt. In all of the joy and the fellowship, we will be giving people a glimpse of the abundant life that is waiting for them in Jesus. And who knows? As the children are gleefully running here and there around that playground, there might be someone in the crowd who feels the same way a woman by the name of Irma felt when she got up one Sunday morning in the middle of a sanctuary and began to pray. You'll find this story in a daily devotion that was written by Reverend Anthony Robinson. In the devotion, he said that that was the first time he had ever seen Irma. And this is what happened. When it was time to pray, we asked God to comfort Sid, who was getting over gallbladder surgery and hoped to be playing golf again soon. We asked God to be with the homeless people and all people in need. Then Irma got to her feet and started in. She told God that it was rough out there, but that she was trying her best to stay on the way. She said, that this week she had come close to doing the unthinkable. She wanted to, but she knew that wasn't right. She knew it wasn't what Jesus wanted. Irma called on Jesus to give her the strength to do the right thing. She asked Jesus to hook her up with the weapons of spiritual warfare because she was up against some seriously nasty demons. She prayed for victory over Satan and at the end, Irma murmured in the precious name of Jesus several times, then sat down. Not a sound until some hitherto bored teenager sat up and said, wow, like amen to that. <laughs> After church at the door, one of the first people out said to me, your services have gotten more interesting. I'll think I'll come again next Sunday. Good people, Jesus is the ultimate good news. And wouldn't it be wonderful if that went viral? In fact, when uh, this worship service is posted on our YouTube channel later today, wouldn't it be wonderful if we got 4.3 million likes? <laughs> And before I say the final amen, I'm going to ask Ben and Maritza to stand up. Ben Makowski and Maritza are also going to get married, and I didn't want them to feel shortchanged. <laughs> yes, I, I, that's right. I forgot to mention that in the sermon. I'm performing. Uh, ben and Maritza's uh, wedding this um, August, and then Josh and Elisa's in August of next year. So, I'm a happy guy. <laughs> Amen.
People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen. Mm -hmm.